It's just before seven in the morning, mid-June, and it's going to be a beautiful day today. The temperatures are predicted to be about 31 degrees Celsius. We're going to track our solar power system today to see how much it produces, and we're gonna compare it to how it did a couple of weeks ago with the rainy day video that we did. We've picked today because it's going to be really hot. That means that we're going to be able to run our aircon system all day. The reason that we want to be able to do this is because there is a limitation to this video idea. And that is when the batteries are nearly charged, a trickle charge begins, meaning that it won't show the full potential of what our system could be generating. So the idea is that we're going to keep the batteries from getting full for as long as possible so that we can see how many watts it might bring in. If we don't manage to keep some space in the batteries, then we won't know the full potential. We have 2355 watt LG panels on the roof, giving us 7,100 watts in total. We have a Victron set up with MPPTs, the Serbo GX and the Quattro 10kVA inverter. And we're using Pilotech US 3000C batteries. We have seven of those. So let's get started and see how we get on. So it's seven o'clock. Here's the first look at the panels. Already in pretty good sunshine. Slightly hazy, but not very much. And only a tiny bit of shade cast by our conifers. So as you can see, we're at 81, 82% in the batteries at the moment, 1,830-ish watts coming in on the PV charge, which you can see is completely different to this time a couple of weeks ago when it was raining. It's worth reiterating that this rainy day was particularly dark and gray, especially for June. So we were really surprised at how low the PV was that day. So it's nine o'clock in the morning, and although it is a little bit cloudy, you can see there's a lot of sun hitting those panels. In our previous video, some people said about cutting back the conifers because of the shade that they cast later in the day. That's something we've been meaning to do for a really long time. Um, there's just been other jobs that have got in the way, things that have been more pressing. We're definitely hoping to get it done this weekend. You might see them starting to disappear as we get through this video today. So you can see that the batteries have now jumped up to 90%. Um, that will continue to climb really quickly as we go through the morning. 4,800, 4,900 watts coming in on the PV, which means we are covering our load, which is only um, around the 1,000 mark, although that's now dropping um, to 220 watts. And then you can see that we've got over 4,000 watts going into the batteries, which have now jumped up to 92%, so charging really quickly, which is a massive difference to what was happening on the rainy day when we filmed, where we only had about 100, 150, what's going in at this point in the day um, and that wasn't even covering our load at the time so um, a big difference okay so it's now 11 o'clock still quite hazy today um, but yeah let's see how the panels are doing so as you can see the batteries are now at 100 percent that means that the PV charge will now be responding directly to the load. So when the load increases, the PV will increase and you can see that happening here. Um, that's because the PV isn't going into the batteries anymore, it's just responding to cover the load. So the PV coming in today is more than 4,000 watts higher than it was this time on our rainy day. So yeah, really shows the difference that weather can make. Okay, so it's one o'clock now. It's absolutely scorching, but the sky still isn't clear. So let's see how it's getting on. So this is what makes this video difficult and this was the limitation we were talking about. We've got 100% in the batteries, we've got 1200 watts coming in, but that's matching the load. And based on the time of day, the height of the sun and the weather that we've got, we would be bringing in a lot more than this 1200 that we're getting in at the moment. This is where this video doesn't show the full picture and that's also the limitation of our overall statistics for the year or for the month as well. So quick comparison to what it was like when it was raining a couple of weeks ago. As you can see at this time of day we were only bringing in around 400 watts so even though we're only matching our load we're still bringing in a lot more than we were on that day. Three o'clock now and whilst it's still absolutely boiling it is a little bit cloudy just still a bit hazy so we're still not getting that perfect solar result. However as you can see that wouldn't make any difference anyway because we are still at 100% charge on our batteries so the PV charge is still matching the AC load. And here's a comparison with the rainy day. As I explained on the rainy day video, the batteries were depleting very quickly that day because we were using a lot of appliances. We were using the washing machine and the tumble dryer, which we wouldn't usually do on a rainy day. But as I explained in the video, we were going on holiday the next day and we were doing a lot of clothes washing to make sure we were ready for that, which is why we ran the batteries down so much. We wouldn't usually do it that way. We would usually wait for a sunny day. Unfortunately, we didn't have a lot of choice, but not to worry, the batteries were back up to 100% by 10 o'clock the next day. 
Okay, so it's now five o'clock and as you can see, we're not getting a huge amount of sun to the panels now. So as you can see, the batteries are now dropped to 96%. That's because we are still using the aircon because it's absolutely boiling. The PV isn't covering the AC load anymore, as you can see. However, in comparison to what we were doing on the rainy day, we're still bringing in nearly 10 times as much as we were then. Only 64 watts going in at this point on the greyest, rainiest day we've ever seen in June. So you can see that the solar's done really well today and has covered the consumption with the production being 25 kilowatt hours and the consumption being 23 kilowatt hours. And that is a day with the aircon on all day. So in comparison to that, here is the data from the rainy day where you can see that consumption outstripped PV production quite dramatically. We produced 5.5 kilowatt hours that day and consumption was actually 15 kilowatt hours. But as I said previously, this was not a normal day in two respects. The first being that it was an incredibly dark day, an incredibly grey day, and it's worth noting that not all rainy days are the same. We can bring in a lot more than 5.5 kilowatt hours on a rainy day. It just happened that the cloud coverage on this day was particularly heavy as well as the fact that it was raining. Also, on a rainy day, we wouldn't usually run the tumble dryer two, three times, but as I explained earlier, this was the day before we went away for several days. We have two small children and we were using the tumble dryer almost continuously through the day really, and that's what pushed our consumption up. On a rainy day, normally we wouldn't do that. We would um, hold off on any washing that needs doing or any tumble drying that needs doing and we would wait until we have sunshine and a better PV production in order to get those jobs done. To see the rainy day video that I've been talking about, click this link and if you haven't already, consider subscribing so that you don't miss a summary of our first year of solar which will be out soon.